Destiny's on the line, Arthur. Accept the charges. Is this gonna be a long call? Could I sit? Sure. How can I put this? Murder. It's just not cool. Impolite! Quite a kick. What the world needs now is us. Hello? Hello? Hey, uh, this is Michelle, and you are being recorded. So, okay. So, um, I want to start off by asking you to tell us who you are while we're speaking with you, and we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, my name is Christian Newman, and I uh, play Arthur on the new version of The Six, which is premiering on Amazon August 25th. Now, I'm, I'm going to start from there. Um, I actually watched your pilot in a couple of episodes, and I have, some, I have questions for you. So, sure. so first, of, first of all, I want to ask you, what is it about this show where it just won't die? <laughs> it's a great question. I mean, it's, it's weird because, uh, you know, Ben Edlund, who's the showrunner of this show, is the guy who created these characters 30-plus years ago when he was a teenager. And I think... You know, for things to last for that long, they have to tap into something fundamental. And I think, you know, the thing that's so um, endearing and enduring about the Tick as a character is that he is such a, a force for pure good, you know? Mm -hmm. He's very simple-minded, and all he knows and cares about is, is helping people and fighting evil, and protecting the innocent, and he's just a very pure, uncomplicated hero. And I think for the last 30 years since The Tick was created, superhero culture has gone more and more towards sort of tortured heroes, and doubting heroes, and anti-heroes, and heroes fighting each other, and stuff like that. And The Tick remains this, like, bastion of positivity. And then, you know, Tick is who we want to be, and I think Arthur is who people actually are, you know? Arthur is the guy who wants to do the right thing, but is so scared and overwhelmed and ill-equipped for everything in every situation. And so I think there's, like, this id, ego thing between the two of them where they reflect kind of how, how most of our minds work. And I think that's what's really tapped into, you know, the culture in some way and kept these characters alive for that long. So, so here's my question. After watching the pilot, I was a little confused where it seemed like the tick was actually author or, or a statement of his imagination or something he dreamed up. Can you talk a little bit about what seems to be a totally different direction than the other variations of the show? Um, where can you talk a little bit about that? And if I'm reading it wrong? Yeah, I, no, I mean, you're not reading it wrong. I think that question is something we're dealing with in the show, and I think we, we you know, deal with it more um, across the season, and if we're lucky enough to get multiple seasons, I think that's kind of the larger story that Ben wants to tell over a couple of years. Um, you get some further answers uh, as the season goes on, but you also get more questions, but I think, you know, whatever the sort of literal didactic answer is, I, I think the bigger point of the show, in a way, is that each of these guys is like one half of a person, you know? Mm -hmm. They do have this bizarre symbiotic relationship, whether they're literally the same person or not, because they can't really function without each other. I mean, Arthur's this guy with this, like, very rich interior life who can't really act at all. And the tick is all action without any sense of strategy or awareness mm -hmm. or consciousness, deeper consciousness. And I think, you know, the show's almost like a romantic comedy in a certain way, you know, minus the physical stuff, it's, like, about these two people learning how to work together and become more functional. So they're, they're each, like, half, uh, and they need each other in order to make it through the day. But if you're, if you're going to dream, if you're going to dream up an author ego, would you really dream yourself up as a sidekick? Um, I, you know, I think Arthur traditionally has, like, been a sidekick in the previous versions of the six and mm -hmm. this version centers Arthur a little more. I think he's still a sidekick in the, you know, sort of traditional sense, and that he's the smaller guy, he's a little more the brains and the muscle, you know, if you're going into the archetypes. But I really think over the course of the season, they've become partners, you know? I, I think he is everything he wishes he could be 
and Arthur is everything that Pick wishes he could be. And so they kind of have like a 50-50 partnership in a lot of ways. I, I actually kind of like the, the focus on Arthur this, this season because the other show is always focused on the tip, you know. And, mm-hmm. and I wonder if that's where those shows failed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just want to get your thoughts on Or actually, let me rephrase this as a question. What, sure. Why do, why do you think the other shows failed? And what, why do you think, what, what, I want to go back. What makes this show different from the other sure. versions of it? Sure. You, you know, I mean, the history of this property is interesting because the, the cartoon show was, uh, it ran for three seasons, and it got really good ratings, but the problem with it was that they realized that most of the people watching it were college students mm-hmm. and not kids. Then told me they had an issue where, like, none of the merchandise was selling because the audience was, like, 20-year-olds who were waking up early on Saturday morning to watch it. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like the wrong show at the wrong time that kind of built the following. And I think when the Warburton show was on the air in, in the early 2000s, it was before superhero movies had really taken off, and they were still kind of viewed as kids' property, so there wasn't really a climate for that show to make sense. And now we're in an era when superhero media is, like, so oversaturated, you know? It's, it's so much of the marketplace, which, you know, can lead to, like, fatigue, but it also means you have a general public who understands all the cliches and the tropes of how these stories work. And so you're able to parody and satirize these things more effectively because you don't have to spend time explaining the things that you're satirizing. It's just kind of like seeped into the culture. But I think the thing that Ben really wants to do with this version, and he's in a unique position because most people, you know, like Stan Lee created Spider-Man, but he doesn't get to write every Spider-Man movie. Ben created the concept, but he also has had a dominant hand in every single version of the show. And he really wanted to try to do something different with this one. And the big challenge for him was, can I make this function on more of an emotional level? Can I kind of make this more than just a satire or a parody and make this a show where you really care about the characters and uh, care about the stakes and the action sequences and in the emotional sequences? And so in order to do that, I think he realized it kind of has to be Arthur's story. Because the whole point of the tip is that he doesn't change. He's so confident in his sense of justice that he just keeps moving. And so it has to sort of be an emotional story about Arthur learning how to be a hero. And I think that's relatable because he's a very, very unlikely hero. You know, we have a lot of movies and TV shows where you have a character doubting whether or not they're up to the task. But when the guy's played by Ryan Reynolds, I don't think he really believes that he would doubt himself in the same way. Um, And I don't look like someone who should be on a show like this. And the backstory given to the character is is so different than we usually see in this kind of world. I think that was the really unique take that Ben had on this, and it seems to be striking a chord with people so far. And one of the interesting things about this seems to be that Amazon is actually spending some money on it, so there's actually, like, real, like, kind of superhero action in it as well. Yeah, that's what I love about it. I mean, you know, I, I love... Um, a lot of my favorite movies and TV shows are things where I feel like they get to have their cake and eat it too, where you get to sort of like comment and satirize the genre, but also have it work as the thing it's satirizing. And I think like very early on, the idea was if this is going to work, it has to look good. It can't look like a parody. It has to look like Marvel Netflix shows. And the action sequences have to be as good as anything else on TV. Um, you know, and we take that stuff seriously. You know, we try to do it straight and not goofy, but then the hope is that it ends up being funnier in the long term that you have such serious elements in such a ridiculous world and vice versa. Is that part of the reason why it actually works, you think, is the fact that you have, you guys take it seriously? How do you walk that fine line? Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I try to err on the side of playing stuff as seriously as I can and hoping that the comedy will come out of just the, the sort of contrast, you know, the juxtaposition between the elements. Um, the script is so naturally funny. I think there's such this weird kind of creative comedic ideas and some, like, beautifully written lines that, um, you know, sometimes if you're in a comedy and the jokes aren't that good, you have to really push to make it funny. You're, you kind of oversell it. And with this, I try to just um, look at every scene and just, figure out what the best way to serve that 
scene is, you know? Because sometimes Arthur is the funny character in a scene. Sometimes he's the emotional character. Sometimes I'm just running. And I try to, you know, sometimes it feels like over the course of one day I'm shooting four different TV shows. But I just try to get on the wavelength of whatever that scene asks of me. And what, what's been the hardest part about this journey for you, and what's been the easiest part? Um, you know, I, I think they're kind of, the, the two answers are close together. The hardest part is just, you know, I've never been the lead of something before, you know, or co-lead of something like this before. So it's just the amount of work you have to do, you know? I'm used to being, like, the assistant to the main character in a TV show. And so it's like, okay, you have, like, two scenes, and you carry a clipboard, and you hand some paperwork, and you say a couple lines. But a lot of the day, you're sort of being able to rest or relax or prepare or whatever it is. And with this, I'm sort of always on. So it's just the the amount of work. And there's never a scene that's easy, you know? Um, Every scene is challenging in its own way, and often challenging because of, how many different shifts I have to make between different types of scenes within a day. The easy part for me was I just felt, you know, I was a fan of the old shows, so I had a sense of who this character was, but from the moment I read the script for the pilot, I felt like it was just so clearly realized that I always felt like I had a sense of who this guy was. Not that it didn't take work to sort of dig deeper, but the easy part was I was never kind of questioning what Arthur would do in a situation. I always mm-hmm. felt like I just kind of understood him, and then the hard work was figuring out how to do that properly. You know, and I'd say it's like sometimes as an actor you get a part and it doesn't really make sense, and you're on the beach with a metal detector, like, looking for treasure. And with this, I knew exactly, like, where the X on the sand was. It was just about digging, which is still exhausting, but it, it's a lot easier if you know where you're digging from the beginning. And and, last question. Oh, ooh, uh, oh boy! I have five more questions. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, uh, hmm. Uh, final question. And then the time it took me to tell you that, I probably could have squeezed in those five part questions. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, um, I guess I'll ask a, a trophy question to close, which is: Why should people watch watch your version of the chicken? and why should we give it a chance? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, the thing I really love about the show is, is I think, is um, a lot of superhero movies and shows now are about superheroes fighting the apocalypse or about superheroes um, fighting each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how that's become such a big trend now. Oh, don't even get me started on that. I have a whole, like, rant about that. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, i got a lot of feelings on that. But I like that this show gets back to a very pure idea of superheroes, kind of what makes kids fall in love with the idea of superheroes when they're young, which is these people who are given power and choose to do the right thing, are driven just by an empathy and a compassion for other people. And I love that, you know, as you see the rest of the season, there are a lot of things where we save civilians. And that shouldn't sound like a groundbreaking thing, but I feel like a lot of superhero media has gotten away from that. And I, I mean, think I mean, there's a really positive message. message in that, even though it's not a message show at all. We're not trying to teach people any lessons. I think it is a show just about sort of humanity and, and care and all of that. And I think coming at it from such a, a earnest kind of genuine angle from that, while also sort of satirizing the tropes of superhero shows and movies, the hope is that it's maybe a show for people who are burned out on other superhero things, that it's kind mm-hmm. of maybe a chance to refresh and get back to the basics of what these things, you know, can be. I mean, don't you miss the days when heroes are actually heroes and villains? Yes. Villains. Yes. yes. I mean, and that's what I love about this show is you get to save people off of crashing buses and things like that, you know? Yes. It feels very aspirational to me, which is really cool. So, awesome. This is a great conversation. Um, so, good luck. And I actually really like the show, so I'm, I'm going to be reviewing it in the next day or so. So, Thank you very much. much. I really appreciate that. And, and good luck. Thank you. You too. Nice talking to you. Same here.